A big smile on your face. Yeah, you raise your hand first, so you're first. <laughs> What's your name? Hi, I'm Kelly. Kelly, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Great. I heard you on the radio a lot, so yeah, that I've always be. been too chicken to call in, and now I'm going to expose myself here. Excellent. All yeah. right. Yeah, I, I've been told that there's, there isn't a microphone I don't like, so I've been on the radio a bit. So, okay, tell me your, uh, what problem would you like co -co my Work, coaching around? Work, employment. Okay, tell me more. Okay. F tell me more, how brief that is. Gets it out. She clearly wants. She said, "Okay, you could." When she said, "Okay, good," she was saying, "Good, I get a chance to talk." Little brief interjections like that can really help. I also noticed she took took a, a deep breath and she sighed, so she's a little nervous. Even though I was talking to you, I had one ear listening to her. So I said, "Okay, I got to make sure that I, I keep her calm, so she's going to be at her best." Go ahead. Okay. Well, thoroughly confused right now. Not working. Um, looking. Uh, I've got a, a very diverse background, and I find my challenge is that I've sampled so many different fields and careers, and uh, I mean, from firefighting to auctioneer, mental health, and sales and marketing, et cetera. And Everything. Yeah, so, you know, I, I joke, and I say, well, gee, it's hard to decide what to do when you're so good at stuff. Right, but notice I said everything. I didn't interrupt her. I was like a passing comment of assent. It's a, way, it's a verbal way of nodding. Okay, yeah, everything. I paraphrased everything she said in one word, right, without, but I said it softly so she didn't feel like I was stopping her at all. Little subtle techniques, you don't need to use all these, I'm just pointing them out as I use them. They're not critical, but it's an opportunity, they always say catch them in the moment. These are learning moments in case you might grab on them. Please go ahead. Okay, so uh, where do I start? It's just a matter of um, how, my, my greatest challenge now being mid-40s is what now? I don't, you know, I've been in the hospitality industry most recently because of the flexibility that allows me and it's well suited for my, my personality and skill set and gives the free time and flexibility better pay than the $12, $15 an hour jobs that you can't live on here in San Francisco. So, but now what? Because in 20 years from now, I don't want to be waiting tables. My feet already hurt. You know, there's no pension, there's no retirement. And I look at my brother who's got the, you know, government ways, been doing the same thing 20 years, retirement, family, etc. I'm single, no, not married, not kids, so I'm free to come and go as I please. Although I like my little 200 square foot apartment in San Francisco, and so I, I keep this. I love the city, but it's a challenge and a struggle to live here. So it's great living in a big city like this. There's, you know, Craigslist, gig surf, lots of jobs you can just get, but that's great, and I've had the three or four jobs at a time, and that's stressful, but I do what I gotta do, but I'm really looking for the clarity, how, how to decide, you know, when you're good at lots of different stuff, and I've sampled this, and all my friends and family are like, well, here, try this, and everyone has an opinion what you think you should do, and I'm like, great, thanks, and I don't want them to feel like I'm not listening. Thank you. No, there isn't any 80,000 a year nanny jobs. You know, if you find me one, I'll take it, but that's not what they pay. And, you know, great counter service, sling and coffee, of course, would be good at it, but I did that when I was in college. And, and so, so now what? So, um, Right now, it's really hard because I, I think for me, once I make a decision, the doing is easy. It's just deciding. I always feel like, okay, once I choose this, then it's, you know, got me on that trajectory down that way. But what about all these other things? And is that going to allow me to, you know, so it's hard making the decision. One, I need the money now. And then I also want to be thinking about long term. So I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know. You're, <laughs> take <Okay>. it on. <laughs> now, the, the, uh, the natural thing that people tend to do is, they reflect and say, oh, that must be really difficult, da, 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 and it makes a person feel good. But I don't feel that in the end, that feels technique-y, and it doesn't feel legitimate. So I'm not going to even waste a moment on that. She saw I was engaged, and I was nodding, and, it w and so whatever empathy I had was demonstrated without my having said a word. So I'm not going to do that. But what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to try, a f I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to say, and I believe in giving... One of the great little techniques is giving two choices so that they don't have, they, you're, you're narrow, she's overwhelmed with all these things. And giving her a couple of choices can narrow us down like the game of hot and cold when you were a kid and somebody was hiding and you know, you're hot, you're cold, you're warm. So I'm going to do that. Does your intuition within you, the goddess within you, tell you that you're going to get your next stable career? Because it sounds like that's what you want, some stability finally, mm -hmm. right? That showed I was listening. Um, through one of your network connections, because there's many things you could do well. Is it going to be something you can get into somebody, or is it not going to be from somebody you know? I have no idea. 
I, I, I really, I don't know. I know a lot of people, um, although I've not embraced social networking, that's my bad, that's on my New Year's resolution. I know, but it is a matter of, I think if I had tapped into that, I would probably be busier than I knew what to do with, but I don't know. Um, I've had random things out of the blue come, and then people have also, who you know, has gotten me indoors too, so I don't know the answer to the question. Now, I'm, now in this case, because I am going to give her a little bit of practical advice, that is more advice giving, but social, I believe that social networking for jobs is way overrated because the nature of the relationship you have on LinkedIn or in Facebook or whatever is wafer thin. You said that you've, you've had people in the past give you leads. That's normally when you're a generalist and you've done all kinds of things, but you're smart and capable can do a lot, a lot of things. Normally, it is through your connection. So if I asked you to be systematic about it, and make a list of everybody you know they don't who likes you and simply say i'm scared being vulnerable i'm i'm looking for some i you know i'm i can be i've done a lot of things from being an auctioneer to to hospitality um, but i'm looking for something more stable where i'm not on my feet all day that uses utilizes my social skills and my brain and my nurturing personality because i got it because you really wanted to be a nanny you know uh, do you know somebody i should talk with do you think, if you trusted the goddess within yourself, do you think that would work for you or not work for you? I think a recommendation from somebody I know of who to talk to, yeah, and I've definitely used that before, and, and that can help. It's just getting down to, okay, so what direction do you want to ask for? What you, and if I, I'm at, sometimes there's a term called false precision. You don't know exactly what you're looking for, mm -hmm. and you're open to many. If I, if one of your friends referred you to a company that did, um, oh, I'm making something absurd, uh, that decorated, that painted, painted libraries, and they needed somebody who was going to sell sell that service to libraries, and they were going to pay you a, an amount of money that was going to be sustainable, mightn't you say yes? I would explore that. Right even though you never would have thought about it in a million years. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to have something specific to ask. You can be relative. You can't say I'm open to anything. I'm desperate. That's too broad. Right. But if you say something like, I'm known for both people skills, ability to learn quickly, and nurturance, and I'm wondering if you know somebody I should talk with, that leaves the door open for them to think of any of a wide range of people they know. Now back to co-coaching. So if I'm saying that to you, Trusting the goddess within you, does that feel like pie-in-the-sky bullshit? Or does that feel like something you'd like to actually try? It feels like it's going to open up more cans of worms, you know, that somebody else is going to, oh, well, here, why don't you try this? And here, why don't you try that? And I feel like there's just more suggestions on the plate to consider. Oh, and, and that's bad, you're saying? Well, uh, I'm already more, I don't know that I can handle any more options. And it's like, I, I've got lots of choice. It's something, I don't know, I don't know. I want to make sure I've heard you well. What you really want in the end is a, a, a sixty to eighty thousand dollar job that's stable and rewarding. And right now, it's just ideas you have. But if somebody tells you about somebody you run who's looking for a salesperson in this painting thing, and they can introduce you, that's not expanding. That's giving you a very right. specific lead that could lead to an actual job. Right. So is that opening a can of worms, or is that closing the can? I suppose can? not. Yeah, that is more of a specific um, direction, or one door, instead of welcome to the mall. Right. And so I don't f I, I'd like to continue our, the, I don't feel that's enough. So it's great. I'd like you to make a list, you know, with your permission, how do you feel about making a list of 10 or 20 people you know, telling them the three basic things about you, that you're nurturing, you're smart, and, you, uh, and you're social? and looking for a, a job that's stable and that is not going to pay minimum wage or whatever. First of all, does that feel like a, part, a good part of the job search plan? Like asking 10 people to give me their suggestions of when I give them... Of, a of somebody you might talk with. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah sure. That, that's a piece of the puzzle. Let's look at something else. You've done many things, but if there was a goddess and the goddess were to say, you had a gift or two, that you're naturally very good at or very skilled at that pays, what would the goddess say that you potentially, you, do you know? Yeah, there's a lot of things I'm good at and I've made money doing, so I'm torn. Okay, why don't you list the three uh. that, 
See, I'm always trying. I'm trying to narrow her in without closing her off. I'm sorry. This is no. Tough. You're doing great. <laughs> Tell me three things that you know you can do well. Let's start with that. Okay. So keeping it small. Let's say um, um, design, customer service, sales. Okay. There's three. So let's let's look at those. When, when you say the word design, does that feel realistic? Yeah, because I'm very passionate about the arts and have been, you know, involved in the community and started a flower design business, which, you know, we didn't even bring into this conversation. Does but your intuition tell you there's enough money in that, or should that be a hobby? It, it's feeling more like a hobby, although it could potentially grow into, you know, that's why I started a business thinking I, I like to be my own boss for sure. Um, but it, it's going to take time to, to grow to that. So right now, our arts are a passion. I mean, I've volunteered a lot, but uh, nonprofit, I've got a lot of experience in that, and I'd really like to move it toward a profitable in my, my finance. So I'm not eliminating working for arts organizations. Um, I am still would love to be involved in the community. It could be professional, but I'm borderline hobby with so it. So I'm listening to you, and I'm seeing a person with a very engaging personality and with an interest in the arts, worried a little bit about how viable it would be. But you also mentioned sales. Had you ever, sales is fundraising. Had you ever thought yeah. about being a fundraiser for an arts organization? I've done that, yes. How did that work for you? Good at it. Um, however, with the change of the economy back in 2008, there was definitely a shift. Um, I did a lot of corporate sponsorship and, and nonprofits. Um, Arts organizations or not, uh, most of my work experience has been nonprofits, and there's been a shift um, toward you know shelter, food, safety, uh, as you know giving points. I mean, the arts is very much the affluent, you know, and a, a luxury item, and there's a lot of money still in that direction. Um, begging for money, I kind of lost my taste for it, and I also thought there was good job security in fundraising. Exactly. There's not. There's not. I mean, grant writing, I found more. I mean, because events was more my specialty. I'm a great event planner and, you know, fundraiser in that capacity as far as, you know, even just a direct ask. But it does come down to the, so give me your money, you know. And, yeah, I'm good at it, but I don't know. I, I took a I step out of that. I wanted to. So does the goddess with, and notice I interrupted her. She was, That's she fine. I'm fine her, with interrupting. She had reached the point. I know she was running out. And rather than let her struggle, I did interrupt. So would the goddess within you, and I like giving choices, so would the goddess within you tell you you should be work for that arts nonprofit as a grant writer, as an event putter on her, or as a pitcher, direct pitcher of money? I like the events. Events come are okay, a lot of fun. And would the goddess within you tell you you should work in, uh, in event planning for an arts nonprofit and focus on getting that, or be, a, you said, sales? some other kind of a sales position. I would rather do the, the events. Definitely my passion's okay. there. So if we said that in addition, to there's going to be two prongs to your job search. One is going to be you're going to make a list of 10 people you know. Tell them that while you're very interested in, in doing event planning for a, a nonprofit, you're also uh, op open to anything that's going to pay decently that's going to involve potentially sales, design, and whatever the third one was. Sure, thanks. <laughs> thanks for listening. Customer, no, Good customer listening. service is a dead end. Bad. Right? Lowest satisfaction. It's terrible of pay. Of, and, le and worse than customer satisfaction because you're always dealing with people with problems. But I'm so good at that, you know. I wish it paid better. Great. So you you're know? so you're you're pushing back. Do you would you like to be involved in customer as a customer service manager? Yeah, if it well, yeah, sure. If it the, the pay was right. Would you rather be a customer service manager or, or an event planner for a nonprofit? Hmm. One is a desk job, a lot more on the phone, one is more out and about. I like the events. I, it's okay. it's you gloat. I again now there's another technique. I watch her face. A face is a light bulb. And it can light up all the way or part way. She lighted up at the event planning for the nonprofits. Art's preferable, but I could see her still enjoying doing it if it wasn't art. Absolutely. No, but that as long as the check clears. That wasn't technique. As long as it wasn't the check, as long as the check, check clears. clears. Right. No, but I was watching her like a hawk. That's part of what being a good listener is. Listener is not just to the words, it's to the face. It's to all of it. Okay. So if we said that the two prongs are you're going to make a list of 10 people who like you, Say that you're open to any anything. Your your first choice would be some kind of an event planner for a nonprofit, especially an arts one. But you're also open to something that relates to sales, nurturance, design, etc. 
And the second thing is you're going to make a list of nonprofits that you really believe in that maybe are not the biggest ones because it's going to be hard to get a, a job at a famous one, but some nonprofits that you believe in and speak to their director of development about a job. Trust the goddess within you. How does that feel as a plan? It feels like an option. Let's be silent for 15 seconds. Get in touch with how you're feeling really deep down. What's feeling yucky, good, and fuzzy? That's the other way I word that. What feels good, yucky, or fuzzy is a way of focusing their feeling and thinking. 15 seconds of silence starts now. What are you feeling? I'm feeling like I tried that. Um, the nonprofit, just because of the experience I had and what I've noticed with the trends of the industry, and if I could bring in, you know, my hospitality with partner that with the events. I give to the arts organizations my time. I volunteer it. I do flowers, pro bono, yada, yada. But that's why I'm thinking of you know, merging into the restaurant with events, because I've got the hospitality, how they always have private dining. That feels more like the angle I should go. I feel like I've beaten down a lot of nonprofit doors, and I have worked for some major ones. And that's why I'm finding across the board, I don't know if I want to go back to nonprofit. I love the cause. I've always done cause marketing. And I'll continue to be involved and volunteer. but. I want to make some money. I'm tired of being broke. So, so what I'm thinking. hearing you say is you'd like to go to hotels or whatever that do events and be in charge of their event planning. Is that what I'm hearing? Possibly. You po I'm considering that because it's a it's a site specific. It's a it's already established. People need to eat. People need to have parties. So is the plan? And it's not begging for money. So is it's it a different. fair summary to, of the plan that you're going to contact those ten people you know, ask them if they know somebody in that industry. particular industry, as well as other things that would utilize your event planning experience. To what extent does that feel right and wrong? That feels better. I like where this direction's going. Asking people for, how, how, how exactly do I ask those 10 people? What am I asking them? You say, I'm looking you know, for, to return back to some of my best strengths. I'm an event planner by nature, and I'm particularly interested in working for a hotel or resort or whatever in helping them as being an events manager. But I'm also open to um, anything, you know, a, an interesting job in sales or potentially in customer service managing or that it brings in my aesthetic. Might you know somebody I should talk with? Mm -hmm. How, again, how does that feel to you as if we, if I vaporize, it's another technique that I use to put myself out of the equation. If I vaporized, I don't exist. I'm on planet Pluto. That's exactly what I say. What, what, would you feel good about the plan? Would you implement that plan? Something, a variation of the plan? What would, what would Kelly do? I, I will take steps in that direction. I will make a list of, I think, potential co-coaches, some people in my life, friends or family, that can listen objectively without just, oh, you should, 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 should. You know, and I don't know if I can come up with 10 or 20 that can really engage this way, but maybe five that would be some solid connections. But I think I do have, you know, 10 or 20 that might have some recommendation of contacts and career people potentially. And that's why I thought the LinkedIn thing, you know, the social media, the only challenge is like, well, I'm not even public because it's been how do I put who and what my background is without looking like, gee, you've sampled every job there is out there. So, yeah. but that's my albatross. I, I, LinkedIn is really meant to help employers find people. Mm -hmm. And somebody with a background that's varied is going to end up looking. It's like it's Looks like very a person confused. with no clothes. It it lays everything yeah. bare. Right, and I and I I try to I leave things out. I'm like I just not sure how to. But I that's a whole I other conversation. I would use your existing network of people. Does that make? How does that feel? When, does that feel like a relief or does that feel yucky? Well, it, it, I haven't embraced my. Cr I mean, I have like two friends on Facebook, but I have a lot of friends, right? I just those are the ones I want you. Those that's who's going to more likely help you land a good job. Your real friends, not your B. Facebook mm -hmm. or LinkedIn friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are you really feeling right now? Like I'm hiking up that hill. You know, I got work to do. It's it's. 
So say I it again. Know. I want you to summarize again. What are you? What are you? What are you really going to do that's going to feel good to you? What am I going to do? In light of in light of our co-coaching session, what are you going to? What's your to do? Your very specific baby baby step to do list. My baby step to do list is to get a list of people and ask them if they know anyone that I could talk to in events at a hotel, a restaurant, even a nonprofit, or some kind of customer service aficionado position. Was that it? That was, that was basically what I'm, yeah. And it's, it's an action step. Um, it's an action step instead of just, I mean, at least through this conversation has helped, you know, pinpoint, you know, two or three options instead of the 30 I was looking at when I came in, you know? So. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Good job.